Chris Colton from Zen2 Capital. Today I'm here with the new CEO of Capacitor Metals, Chris Grove. Chris, thanks for joining me today. And um, so Capacitor Metals, what interests you in joining the, the company and, and maybe a little bit of background on the project? Sure. Well, good to be here again, Colton. Thank you very much. Um, of course, uh, the Blue River Project, which is the focus of Capacitor Metals, is uh, just one of the two uh, projects that Commerce Resources has advanced over the last 20 years. Um, and uh, the Blue River Project uh, was acquired by Capacitor a couple of months ago, and that was news released. So the project itself, uh, the Blue River set of claims, is really what Commerce Resources was built around, going back to the first financing that I was involved in for Commerce Resources in 1999. Um, the uh, former president of Commerce Resources and CEO Dave Hodge, uh, it was really Dave looking at the dot-com in 1999, 2000, and realizing that there was an opportunity with a commodity, tantalum, that was going to be positively impacted by a surge in uh, computer sales. And that was totally true. Um, so uh, Commerce was created in 1991. Uh, 1999, sorry, it IPO'd in 2001, and uh, Mike Hodge uh, hand-staked the Blue River claims in the fall, uh, winter of 1999, and I was one of the seed, uh, one of the investors in the seed financing round for the company at that time. Uh, since that time, and uh, while the project was owned by Commerce Resources, we ended up proving up one of the world's largest resources for tantalum. And I am not sure that there is a larger defined resource of tantalum in the world at this point in time. And the current resource sits at uh, 54 million tons of, of rock, and uh, it, uh, it averages about a half pound of tantalum per ton. So it's about 24 million pounds of tantalum in the current resource. The thing about tantalum is that it has recently uh, gone through a major sea change in terms of supply and demand dynamics. The dominant source of tantalum supply over the last 15 years has been Central Africa. But for the last five or six years, we had been hearing that production amounts from Central Africa had been falling and continue to fall, and that the industry, the downstream industry, was looking for new sources of raw material. And that potentially is our Blue River project here in British Columbia. So obviously a lot has been done to get to this stage then. If you mentioned you already have a resource calculation and things like that. I know that you're you know talking about over 30 million has been spent on the project. So obviously a lot of work has been done in the past. What is the plan moving forward with Capacitor being that it is pretty advanced already? Uh, happy to answer that, but you know, as you just said, a lot of work have, has been done on the project. Um, when you take a look at the amount of work that has been done, it's really quite amazing. We have drilled just over 59 kilometers on the upper fur deposit itself. 59 kilometers of drilling that's a lot of drilling and it was very ex and you know it cost a lot of money so yes we have spent about 34 million dollars on advancing the upper fur uh, deposit on the blue river set of claims in terms of moving forward one of the exciting things is is that we have a significant amount of material that was taken out in a bulk sample in 2009 2010 and uh, we have some of that at the base of the mountain, uh, proximal to the deposit itself, uh, north of Blue River in British Columbia. But we also have 500 to 600 tons of material uh, here in Vancouver in a warehouse. And uh, we actually went out yesterday and took about 100 kilograms of that material. And we are sending that off for assaying. Uh, to ideally start a, uh, a hydrometallurgical process to produce more commercially marketable samples of tantalum and niobium oxides, for which we have received a significant amount of industry interest in. So uh, moving forward, uh, we are looking to uh, start this hydrometallurgical program, uh, produce samples for industry, and ideally, you know, uh, attract an industry uh, player into some kind of a, an offtake or a partnership agreement. And on that, you are traveling, I think, shortly to Tokyo, is it, for, for something? Well, what are you going there for? Yeah, so uh, in just a week 
from now, I'll be going back to Tokyo again for the International Tantalum and Niobium's annual general meeting, which is happening September 8th through 11th in Tokyo. Um, at that time, we will also be, I will also be meeting again the world's two largest tantalum processors. Uh, the larger of those two I met when I was in Tokyo in May, and uh, it was a very positive meeting, and I look forward to meeting with them again in like 10 days' time. So it's an advanced project with a lot of history. There's some interest over in Tokyo, potentially. You're going to be talking with some major players there. So it sounds like it's a, an advanced project, which, you know, normally we see early stage projects. So that's a nice fresh, uh, breath of fresh air. Is there anything else uh, viewers should know as they kind of get introduced to Capacitor Rentals? Well, I think the thing is, is that Tantalum has been a very quiet player that supports, you know, a multi-trillion dollar industry. And I think maybe a lot of investors might not be as aware of the absolute essential importance of Tantalum uh, being... Uh, allowing for the miniaturization of all electronics. So Tantalum's highest and best use is in electronic capacitors, and capacitors regulate the flow of electricity into everything that is electric or electronic. And ultimately, uh, for those who were around in the early 1980s, uh, prior to the adoption of Tantalum capacitors, you had products like the original mobile phone, the Motorola Dynatac, which weighed 28 ounces and uh, was obviously a burden, although it was a great product at the time because there were no other mobile phones. So as, as being the first mobile phone, it was fantastic. But then Motorola, over the next six years, reduced the weight of that phone by a full pound. So the MicroTac, or the StarTac, which was released by Motorola in 1989, weighed a total of 12 ounces instead of the 28 ounces that was the Dynatac. And the, the biggest fundamental design shift was, was the capacitors, going from aluminum ceramic capacitors over to tantalum-based capacitors. And basically, the electronics industry has never turned away way and there is no alternative that vies uh, for the uh, um, uh, the performance of tantalum capacitors today but uh, at the same time the dominant source of supply has for the last 15 years been Central Africa and so there are, are not that many companies that have been involved in that production from there uh, our project here in British Columbia was always meant to be, you know, a very significant alternate source of supply. And now the global market has shifted, so they're looking for new sources of supply. So it's a very optimal time for us to be working on the project once again. Well, it sounds like there's good demand and you guys are set up well. So we're excited to see what happens in the next couple of months here and we'll keep everybody updated. Thanks very much, Colton. Thanks, Chris.